welcome to another Excel chat walkthrough video. I'm your host Kevin Kelly and today we're going to be talking about uh, using count if to count up the number of cells uh, that fit a certain criteria that we have set. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at our Excel chat article here. Um, basically in this scenario, we want to find out out of these students uh, that took a test, how many of them scored between 80 and 90 or scored in 80 or 90. So equal to 80 or 90 or between that number. And the way that we're going to do this is by using our count if formula. So in this case, we have two criteria. So we're actually going to use um, the count ifs formula. So put equal count ifs. And now it wants us to select our range. So we're going to go ahead and do that. This is our range of test scores. Now it's asking for the criteria. So for the criteria, we're going to put greater than or equal to 80. Now it's asking for the range again because it wants us to specify the range that we want the second criteria to apply to, which is just the same range from the first case. And then close parentheses. So as you can see, the formula spat out four, which is correct. As you can see, there are four scores here that are either 80, 90, or between those two numbers. And that's basically how you use count if on a simple level. Um, our next example is with dates. So in this case, uh, with the dates, it's the same concept, except we're going to reference these cells. When you're referencing the start and end date, instead of inputting the criteria manually, you're going to want to anchor it. So the formula for this one is a little bit longer, and we can find it right here in our Excel chat article. So it's this long formula here. I'm going to paste this in and just walk us through kind of what, what it means. Make that bigger for you guys. So count ifs, again, because two criteria, the start and end date, referencing our range, then our criteria here is E1. So that's this cell here. Then it's asking for the range again, and then our criteria is E2. So, and that's the end date. So as you can see, it's the same concept, except this time we're using dates and we're referencing the cells. Last example here is um, a list of products that are either in stock or out of stock, and then the number of products that have sold. So in this case, we actually have two separate criteria. So we want to figure out, okay, which of these products have a stock that's greater than zero and have also sold zero. So the way that we're gonna do this, it's similar to the other ways, except now we're selecting two different ranges. So in this case, we're gonna do equal count ifs, and then select our first range, which is in stock. Our criteria for in stock is, okay, we want them to have at least something in stock, so we're gonna put greater than zero. Now it's asking for our second range, and this is where we actually select a different range. We wanna put our criteria of, okay, we want that to be equal to zero. We want them to have not sold anything yet. And it gave us two. So as you can see, um, so we wanted products that have not sold any. So that's grapes, lemons, and cherries. And then we wanted them to have something greater than zero in stock. And grapes didn't have anything greater than zero. So we're left with two, which is lemons and cherries. So it doesn't identify the name of the product for us, but it just tells us how many. So if you have a big data sheet with tons of information, it's a really useful tool to find out, okay, how many of these products fit this certain criteria. And you can find out really quick using this formula. Still have questions? Click to get help from a live Excel expert at Excel Chat.